Hey guys, what's going on? This is Sean Hurwitz, guitarist for Smash Mouth, Enrique Iglesias, and a bunch of other bands. I got a chance to have an Instagram live stream today with my very good friend, Alex Fetter. Alex shared a bunch of stages with me when we played for Enrique together, and he's an incredible artist. Check it out. So, uh, so real quick, Hello in Romania. Uh, <laughs> let me do a little intro. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sean Hurwitz, um, guitarist for Smash Mouth. I play for Enrique, and Alec, blah, 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 a bunch of different people, do a lot of stuff in the studio. Uh, and now I'm also a YouTuber. And uh, today I managed to get my uh, amazing friend here that uh, other than being uh, really, really, really good looking is <laughs> also a great guitarist and uh, we play together with Enrique Iglesias and please uh, so Feder tell us a little about about yourself tell the people who don't know you necessarily a bit about you okay sure uh, my name is Alex Feder Sean wasn't lying that is my name um, yeah we played together for years how many years were we in Enrique's band together four well I was in it like a total of four and I think you left about a, a maybe we were together for like two and a half years or so Okay. Um, yeah, so that was, I was, uh, my first real musical venture was my own band in New York called the XYZ Affair. I did that for a long time. Um, when that band broke up, uh, I moved to Los Angeles, wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do and ended up kind of by, just by stroke of luck, a friend recommended me to audition for Enrique's band. That was my first real for hire gig that I did. Um, I stuck with that for around six and a half years. I kind of left formally more or less, uh, 2017, August 2017 was my last regular gig. Um, uh, and then I took about six months off, wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. Uh, studied, I studied meditation teacher training for a little bit. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I was just going to do a total shift. I was done with it all. And then um, I got a call from a friend to audition for an artist named LP. And then I've been um, playing with LP steadily for the last uh, two and a half years. I would have been out on in the middle of a long tour now, but obviously nobody's on any tour right now. Yeah, you were supposed to be out all year. Yeah, I was going to be out to the point where I had uh, I was I would, had told my landlord that I was moving out of my apartment and I was going to move my stuff into storage. I had the storage unit reserved. I had sent my thirty days notice to my landlord, and then a week later, just everything disappeared. Um, so yeah, but the, the nice thing is I try to immediately to pivot to my own stuff. I record under the name Silly Great Night, which is this Instagram account that you guys are seeing. And uh, you know, I had recorded a lot of music and not really figured out what to do with it. Uh, I was releasing Christmas songs once a year. So I'd released three of those, but I hadn't released any other music. And all of a sudden I'm home, I'm not on tour. and. There's been a nice, uh, like I said, a kind of a nice immediate pivot to releasing my own stuff, doing stuff like this, which I had never done. I was pretty inactive and tried to remain as distant as possible. I still try to keep some distance, but um, but yeah, just kind of, I guess, stepping out a little bit more and, and enjoying it. Great. Um, you know, you brought, so, so really we're here for the fans. We're here for your uh, fans from Enrique, from oh, Alpine. No, 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 no. I'm going to chat with you. The fans are <laughs> well, glad we're here. Guys, I hope you enjoy this conversation. I'm here to talk to my friend, Sean, who now, <laughs> the last time I saw you was February? What did we do? Did we go out for, a, did, was that a, like a help dinner? Yeah, I think we went out. I think I want to say that we went out for a dinner. I think we went out for dinner in February. But if not, then the last time I saw you was I had a show of mine in January that I know you were at. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's possible that I haven't seen you in nine months. But the, the soonest I think I've seen you is eight months. Hi, Bram. <laughs> hey, Bram. Um, damn. Yeah. So I, I guess for those of you who don't know, uh, Alex and I are really, really tight. I always call us the two Jews. He calls us the two Jews. You know, <laughs> so what was the picture? The first gig I did with you, we did Monaco. And then and then uh, we were at the airport going to Turkey. This was August 2015. Yes. And, and yes. sent us a picture of us and Joe in front yeah. of a coffee shop that was called? Yes, yeah, so there's, there's a chain of juice and coffee shops called Joe and the Juice. Um, 
took a picture of it was Joe and then the two of us so it was Joe and the Jews. Amazing. <laughs> so um, I know there's a lot of people here. I know you want to say hi to everyone. I want to say hi to everyone. Yeah. Um, favorite Jews, there we go. We got a lot of people from Israel. Um, so I know Sigal actually asked, I'm sure everyone wants to know, what, uh, do you, I mean, do you care to talk about it all? You know, we, we always feel like I've left a bunch of different gigs for a bunch of different reasons, but do you care to share it all? Why you uh, left? Why you felt like uh, the Enrique gig at least? Sure, yeah. Uh, listen, I did Enrique for six and a half years. Uh, like I said, it was my first gig. And uh, and for me, it was mostly just, you know, it kind of speaks interestingly to the circumstances of this year as well. If uh, I find that if I, I, I probably could have just remained content there for a long time. Um, but it just felt at a certain point, like I'm just going to keep doing this until the day Enrique decides to stop touring, which, you know, at some point or another, everybody stops regular heavy touring. Um, so, and I never branched out, you know, you listed a bunch of other gigs you've done. You did smash that, you did that Ann and Alec thing. Like I, I never did these things. And um, I was a little burnt out from life on the road. I wasn't sure if I even wanted to do any more touring at all, but if I was, then I just decided, I was like, let's try something else. I've only done one thing. I, I, I got progressively, I hate to say it, I got worse at the guitar over the course of the gig because I, I was only playing those things. Like that's all I was doing. I wasn't, I, the circumstances, you know, technically people won't really get this, but we weren't even playing into amplifiers. Like we play into those digital pedal board singers. So when I would come home and play my own gigs or I guessed on a gig for Celia, our other uh, mutual bandmate and friend. And I was like, I've gotten worse at the guitar over the last five years. Um, and for me, it just, the last three years I've practiced the guitar more than I had the previous decade before that. Um, I branched out. I actually just started taking flamenco lessons over the course of this um, uh, quarantine. But yeah, it was just kind of like I, I was burnt out. It was a lot of touring and uh, and I just wanted something different. I just wanted to try something different. Yeah, man. And Sigal actually asked why I left as well. And it's it's not the exact same reason, but it, it's sort of what you started saying at the beginning. Um, now, I left when Enrique wasn't working. It's like, dude, if we're working all the time, sure, let's. But he wasn't working, and I, <laughs> we, I don't know if you know this, but we have to pay bills just like any other person. Yeah. So, um, so I had to get work uh, elsewhere, which I just went back to Smash Mouth, and they've been touring a bunch up until now, which no one's touring right now. Right. Um, tell people real quick about your podcast. Still a great joke. Sure. My podcast, Tell a Great Joke, I saw that that was one of the questions that had been previously submitted. Uh, Question. Hi, I, I see all these hellos. Hi, uh, from the various countries you're saying hello from. I'm glad you guys are joining us for this conversation. I'm glad Sean asked me to join in for this conversation. Um, my podcast, Still a Great Joke, which is two years in the making. I was um, struck. So I, when I play shows, when I play Still a Great Night shows, um, I uh, tell long jokes. Sean's witnessed those. I believe at some point or another, Sean, you said more or less that you come for the joke and you stay for the songs. <laughs> um, so I just like telling jokes. They're, uh, they're, they're long. I don't know if anyone else really likes them, but, but I dig it. And, uh, and so for a while, I was like, you know what? I like doing this so much just as an exercise for myself that I I'd love to come up with some sort of podcast version of it. For, uh, my first iteration, which I thought of a couple years ago, which is when I wrote the theme song for the podcast was I wanted to do it in front of a live audience, but it occurred to me that uh, like, it's going to be very difficult. To, like, so for instance, there's a podcast called the, uh, the podcast called the moth and they do that in front of a live studio. but it's a huge NPR podcast. There's no shortage of people who are out to go catch a, the moth performance. Uh, for me, I would have to be continually asking my friends to come, which would mean either I would have to tell, four to five consecutive jokes for the same audience, which is, a, that's a long time in my joke land. It's a lot, that's about an hour, yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> more, the, the, the first two jokes, the first one was 26 minutes long, my first podcast episode, yeah. So anyway, I kind of shelved the idea when I went on tour with LP, I, I wasn't really actively pursuing it. And then again, I just was, I'm home, what the heck am I doing? So if anyone is interesting, interested in hearing me tell a very long joke, I encourage you to check out my podcast, Still a Great Joke. The link is in my bio. And, and of course, talk to some interesting people, right? Mm-hmm. So who have, you had, who have you had on so far? 
Yeah, the format that I settled on um, was that I, I have a guest each week. So the guest tells me a joke, and then I tell the guest a joke. So a couple weeks ago, LP was kind enough to, to be on my podcast. It was a hilarious waste of her time, but I appreciated her putting in that, uh, <laughs> being so generous. Um, uh, my first episode was just with a friend of mine. His name is Igor Hiller. Um, he has worked in acting and comedy, but he's transitioning to like coaching, life coaching now. Um, cool. Uh, it was a great, he's someone I'm very close with and it was a great episode because it was kind of me figuring out the format and he, because he works in coaching and in comedy, he was good for, um, helping you. Yeah. He was good for kind of helping me mold it. Sorry. I'm really bad at, this is true when I do my own. You know what? Life. That's cool. That's cool. Let's, yeah. um, let's focus on, on them for a second. Um, listen guys, if you want to ask something, I, there's, I think there's a little button that you can push and ask me things. If not. It's in the story that I posted yesterday, but don't leave. You can ask on here too, but let's, let's take some questions. Let me see here real quick. Um, this one is a quick one. Snacks, sweet, uh, salty or sweet? But you want me to feel that? I think we're in the I, This is, this is all for you, buddy. Unless they say me, it's your, it's a question for you. I, I think you, I think that you should also, it's, it's not fun. A one-sided conversation is not fun. Much like sure. my podcast, it's a, it's, it's a dialogue. So my love answer, that. I believe that you're in the same boat as I love sweet things. That's correct for you too, right? That is correct. Yes. I mean, if I had to choose, it would be sweet, but my answer in general, sweet or salty is yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, and I try to stay away from that as much as I can. You know, yeah. Alex is very into fitness Grosse fiche, as we say, and um, and uh, you know he was he was my coach, mine and Joe's coach on the on the road, um, and uh, and yeah, so we try to stay away from the shit, but uh, we eat some crap sometimes, and it's usually sweet stuff. Let's see, we have something here. Yeah. Matthias says, yeah. "Chaverim, Enrique didn't pay you a salary or just pay per gig." I just ask because artists pay a consistent. A constant salary for their musicians in order to be in priority don't miss them so what he's talking about, what matthias is talking about hi matthias um is uh what's called well i mean yeah it's basically called the salary or retainer where an artist uh, pays you all the time so you're available when they call you're available why because you got paid for all those months that you weren't working right. um i wasn't on that with enrique i you were you on that with enrique uh, I, this is fun. It feels like it feels like you don't, you don't have to say, no, 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 no. I have no problem. Obviously I'm not going to share what, what money we were making, but you know, the, the most gigs that I've been on the circumstance is that I get paid when I'm out. So the idea, just like you said, is I want to stick with an artist who's going to be consistently playing because that is, that's when I'm getting paid. Uh, so that, that was my circumstance for Enrique. I mean, for those, yeah, for those of you who don't know yet, it's, it's not, it's not interestingly enough. Um, it's a cool thing because on days off, we still get paid, right? But the flip side, the funny thing is that I get paid the exact same on a day off as I get paid if we play Madison Square Garden. So we play for 20,000 people. I get paid the same as I did the previous day to go get a cup of coffee with you and Joe. Yes, exactly. So that's so it's sort of per gig, but it's basically when we're out. That's, every gig is different. That's how we got paid with Enrique. Let's take yeah. some more questions. Uh, questions. Hi, Sean. Da, 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 da. Will there be more Insta stories from you guys? Sorry, bro. I'm just going through that. Yeah. Uh, how are you, Alex? Da, da, da. Have you ever thought of collaboration with Sean, uh, like write a song? Um, we, we did. You go for it. Well, the two things. One, uh, a while back, you and I got together and wrote several songs from scratch, and then that kind of petered out. We never finished that, it. That was on me. I think I still have that, and it might be worth working on. I think it, it was good stuff, and I, it was on me. I dropped the ball on that. Uh, that, wait, so I just want to say, I, I, I'll continue addressing this, but I hear someone said, I'd love to hear your podcast with Andy Allo as a guest. I recently reached out to Andy, and, um, and I believe that that could be in the works, so we'll see. Uh, She's I, a busy someone girl. Asked, uh, someone asked what I'm drinking. I'm drinking tea. Sean, what are you drinking? Tea. <laughs> a couple of guys, a couple of Jews drinking tea on a Shabbat morning. Um, uh, well, but, also, but, Sameach, it is Sukkot, so... Oh, is it? Oh, geez, well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm out. Um, but but uh, but we're working on a song right now together. You send me over a track, and I'm working on. I'm just trying to learn how to mix my vocals. But yeah, we're working on a song together. Um, so yeah, actually, more. Now that now that we're home, I think there's more time for folks to brand. Like I don't know. Before I felt so much like if I have time, I want to work on my thing, and that's it. 
And now I'm trying to kind of, you know, if a friend, I'm, I'm trying to do a little more collaboration than I ever did before, just because I don't feel that it's my forte and it's interesting to challenge myself in a different way. Awesome. And I, I mean, yeah, we're doing that. I hope uh, that Alex will do a few songs. I have a few songs that Celia, that I sent to Celia. I don't know which one she chose yet, but I'm trying to collaborate with a lot of people as well. Um, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Just, uh, just, um, Alex, what about a Christmas album? A cr okay, okay. Interesting, interesting point. Interesting point. Okay, so now I have released a total of four Christmas songs. One, the first one was under my own name, Alex Fetter, and then I've released three Still a Great Night Christmas songs. And I do believe, so the interesting thing for those of you who haven't heard my Christmas songs, I strongly encourage you to check them out. They're not your standard, um, they're not your standard Christmas song by any stretch of the imagination. And I'd like to point out that one of them was filmed in my house, in my yes. old house. Yeah, actually, so that song Just that Christmas, Melania was filmed at your house and that vocal was recorded in your studio as well. Awesome. So, so yeah, keep going. So you have yeah, these songs. Sean's house and studio, that, that one, which is, it's probably my favorite one. But anyway, um, so they, they usually touch on a kind of, uh, it's like a social commentary, um, vaguely political, but not leaning towards any one side, I would say. Um, and, uh, and, and it, it just kind of expresses in what it feels. I, I have found that for some reason, the Christmas song, is a wonderful format to express what it is that I'm feeling about that year. Like I summarize my experience of the year, whatever it may be, through a Christmas. It's a good time to do it, that makes sense. Yes, so, but the interesting thing is this year, it, well, two things. One, it just feels like such a shit show. I don't know <laughs> what I have to add to it. And, um, and, the, and the other thing is that one interesting thing about um, quarantine or corona is that it almost took everybody's experience and more or less molded into i feel like most folks are experiencing a different shade of the same color like every like when you talk to them how are you doing it's like well i don't have work and i've been home and i miss seeing this and like everybody's kind of doing some version of a similar thing and um and uh and so i don't know what to say I just straight up, I don't know what to say. Every other year, something kind of hit me at some point, And I found a format, like I, I found a lens through which to view and discuss the year. And this year, something hasn't hit me. So one thing I'm toying with is, I also thought to myself, well, it feels like if you write about something now in two weeks from now, the whole world could have flipped on its head, which seems to be happening frequently. So what I think I'm gonna do is write some music. And then after the election, just see if I can spit out some words on top of it, and then just. I was, gonna, I was going to say the election can be the 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 thing that pushes you to <laughs> what yeah. happens in the election and what happens after the election uh, could be something that really gets you going on that. But, do I, but you, you see this sticker underneath here, this salty or sweet, or is it just popping up for me for some reason? Oh, it's just popping up for you. What do I do to get rid of that? I click on it. I don't know. Maybe click on it. That was like the first thing that I put up. Oh, I know, it won't disappear. That is some, um, I can tell you that we don't see it though. So it's okay. just covering my face in your video? No, it's covering my face. I mean, what's oh, the You look oh, great in right here. Keyboard. Ani me vine bleed, ani me la bel, ketzat, ketzat, that's it. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, first funniest memory about Sean. First funniest memory about Sean? I don't know. That's a strange question. I, 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 I if nothing, if nothing else, it's got to be the the, 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 the the first time I did that. <laughs> and, uh, I, oh, I botched it like crazy. Uh, was it? At, was that the Monte Carlo gig? It was. It was. And someone has that on video, like they have it on video. I, I'd love to see it again. I'd love to, point, I'd love to put that up. I just don't remember yeah. who's got it. <laughs> yeah. I think it takes maturity uh, as a musician to be able to hear a, a massive fuck up and be able to, to laugh about it and enjoy it instead of just wanting it to disappear off the planet. Well, yeah, if no one else is making a big deal of it, I'm not going to, but, but it's, oh, but it's, it's a funny moment. There, it's me. Do you see that? Say again. 
I'm, I'm, I'm seeing an I was there. It's me. I have that video. Do you see that? Oh, who was it? Who was it? Uh, one of Enrique fans? Yeah. Perfect. Please send it my way. <laughs> uh, when you speak Spanish and you don't understand anything, there you I go. Uh, actually, yeah. I wanted to ask, on that note, someone asked, um, do you have plans to make songs in Spanish? Maybe someday. I know you're studying Spanish. Yeah, so um, I am actively studying Spanish. My girlfriend is Mexican. Uh, I don't know if she's on this call or not, but um, but uh, so so obviously she's fluent in English, but my Spanish is almost non-existent, but I've been working really hard. Um, so uh, I do Duolingo every day. We watch Spanish TV shows. I actually watch with the subtitles, but I try to really actively, like, I'm not just blanking out the audio and, and, uh, and watching the, the subtitles. I try and I'll repeat sentences when I'll kind of notice a phrase lining up. Um, uh, and yeah, but Alejandra and I wrote a song when she was here visiting at the start of quarantine. We wrote a song together, which if you go, there's an Instagram called Animal Sessions. Um, it's a duet that we wrote together. Uh, and I think it's just at Animal Sessions. Um, there is a clip of us singing this song. I don't know how else to find it. I don't know how else to find it. But, um, but I mean, you know what? You'll, you'll, um, why don't, when I post this on YouTube, I'll put a link to it. So just find it, send it to me, and I'll post a link for it. Great. Killer, killer, killer. Yeah. Um, I, uh, lyrics are such an integral part of my music. I believe that that is a lot of where, if, if there, if there's something unique that I have to offer, I believe it's my lyrical approach. So I don't ever see doing a full time shift to a second language because my creative voice, I think, hinges upon my lyrics, which are written in English. But, uh, but I am certainly interested in collaborating and writing in Spanish. And I, I, I'm, I, I'm kind of down for it all. Yeah. Awesome. I'm learning Russian um, through Olingo. <laughs> and, uh, and Hebrew, you, you already know, so. But I'm, I'm brushing up. I'm brushing up. <laughs> um, oh, one of many Enrique fans, you said that you posted that video uh, and, and I got mad. I was reading as, as it's such a horrible video. <laughs> But send it to me instead of posting it. I'll post it. I'll give you the credit. But I think it just threw me off when you posted it. Anyway, we can all, we can all laugh at it now. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, you know what? Let's see. There, people are asking questions here. Um, do you guys feel more, do you guys feel more comfortable working as producers or hired guns? You want me to start? Well, see, you're not only, you're not only an artist, you're not only a guitarist, who's gotten a lot better, by the way. I mean, for those of you who don't know, Alex has really picked up and really, really done amazing with fingerstyle playing. I mean, he just dropped a pick a long time ago and was like, I'm just going to do this with fingers and really got so much better over the years. Uh, I have not. But as a producer and writer, I've got, gotten better. But what about you? So... Uh, to me, they're just, it's flexing two completely different muscles. Um, I will say I don't experience the hired gun uh, thing as being a creative expression. I love performing. Um, it's almost, uh, it's almost like a, like an athletic venture. Like I like being on stage and moving around and engaging with the, I like the physicality of being on stage and playing. I like the physicality of like hitting a big chord on guitar and the way that sounds to me, like coming out of my amp, there is something visceral that it does to me. Um, for me the creative part comes, I like producing okay. Um, my, my, the thing I like the most is writing without a doubt. Um, it, it doesn't come quickly or easily to me, but I, I really like it. And that to me is the most satisfying thing. Finishing a song that I've written is satisfying. It's sometimes daunting. I, I hear you, you know, in the studio for hours, just like cranking out production and tracks. Um, I have a lot of difficulty with that. Um, like it, 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 it doesn't, it's not the thing that speaks to me the most. Sometimes getting into that feels, feels daunting and intimidating, starting that process. Once I'm in the swing of things, I like adding all the flourishes and the, the wow, it would be cool if a Mellotron came in here, or you know, the bass doesn't come in until the second. I, li I like that stuff, but um, I guess so the order is I love writing. 
and then and then I, I guess performing and producing are kind of like both things that I do that that aren't the number one thing, but I, I have a lot of love for both of them. I like I like music, so. And I'm more of a performer and producer than a writer. So I love performing and then I love producing and then I love writing. Like I'll write as a job, but I love performing. Uh, my friend Adi says, what's up? Adi Makue. Uh, and he wants to know what the craziest stages, what's the craziest stage you've been on? And then I'll say which one I was on. That was craziest. The craziest stage? That's what he asked. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give I'll give that answer in two parts. The biggest stage I've been on was Wembley. I played that with Enrique twice because we did. Were you on one of those or was Emmett on both of those? I wasn't. That was Emmett with the big drums. Yes. Okay. So the interesting thing is that was the largest show I've played, I believe. And it was one of the least fun I've ever played because I was like 200 feet away from the front row. The thing yeah. that I enjoy the most about shows is the interaction with the audience and feel like I will take a 200 person sweaty club over a 100,000 person festival thing any day of the week, any day. It's just not that enjoyable to me to play for a C with no direct connection. Um, I, so, so that was the biggest stage I've played on, but like some of my favorite shows back in the day, my band, we played, we rented out what essentially amounts to a warehouse. It was summertime, it was hot as fuck. And we just had all our friends come out and it was sweaty. We took our shirts off, which is something I never do at shows. And uh, it was just like a grimy warehouse show. Um, you know, I've never been in a punk rock band. There's no way I could sell myself. It's like, yeah, it was so punk rock. Like that, that wasn't the style. And that also wasn't my vibe. I've always been kind of like a trained musician and all of that. But, um, but to me, those experiences, the kind of grimy, sweaty, like one of my favorite shows of the LP tour last year was we played this, it's a, it's a small art installation in New Mexico called Meow Wolf. And um, it was, it's a crazy building. It's a crazy looking space. It is just this weird art installation having to do kind of vaguely with like UFOs. And it's very, it was really cool, really beautiful. But the show itself was in like a packed, I think there were probably a couple hundred people there maybe. And it was packed. Like I was right, the closest person was two feet in front of me. And I love that kind of stuff. So that's my answer. How about you, Sean? Well, the biggest thing I've done is uh, Kiev. We played in front of 85,000 people. Um, I've got all that, that whole show on GoPro. It's incredible. And, uh, but to me, the, the, the most amazing one is Pake Okun, you know, 40, I think it was 43 or 45,000 people going back to Israel. So being born in Israel, being raised in Israel, and then coming to America when I'm 23, and then going back there years later and doing the biggest stage in Israel was to me like top, you know? Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Uh, what is uh, what is the best thing you've learned from quarantine so far? That's a good question. Oh, I've learned a lot from quarantine. Why don't you start with that one? Because I'll probably start talking for 10 minutes. <clears throat> I don't know if I've learned anything new. Uh, I've, I, I've known, as you pointed out before, if you're working with a big artist and they're working and then they stop working, you're just like, well, I'm shit out of luck. So once again, I've, uh, my, I, I'm a guy, you know me, I'm very business minded and I'm very, um, what's the word? Uh, like I do a lot of different things. I have a lot of eggs in different baskets, right? Diversify. So this again shows me on a business level that no matter what you're doing, diversification is super important. Like you want to be writing songs with Alex. You want to be writing songs for TV and film. You want to be working with Smash Mouth. You want to be working with Enrique. You want to also do the uh, little sessions here and big sessions here. You want to do it all. So I know that a lot of people that don't have that experience might take it but like, oh my God, quarantine, what? We don't have the one thing we do bringing in money. What do we do now? For me, that wasn't a surprise. I'm aware of this, and that's why I'm always, I have real estate, I, I'm in the market, like I'm always, I've got a lot of stuff going on. So it's not new to me, but I think that's the biggest takeaway for just in general. You can't count one thing. You really have to have your hand in a bunch of different stuff in case something like this happens. Yeah, that's definitely true. And I do think that, um, interestingly, that, I guess that, that I can pivot the thing that I've learned, which is um, the thing that has served me best is the concept of surrender, which is to say that 
the people who I've found have done the worst are the people who, um, this is not a judgment by any stretch of the imagination. It's just something I've observed. Um, are the people who uh, kind of can't seem to accept that whatever they had planned is not gonna happen. That this year is not gonna be what they thought it was. The money they had planned on, the travel they had planned, whatever it might've been, the wedding they had planned on, just the life that we all had planned was not what this year was. And yeah. The only reason I feel that I've been able to stay sane was that I've spent no time uh, even really mourning that or struggling with that, or struggling against that. Um, at a certain point, it just was, it was, it was almost like, just like a big old ha-ha from the Lord himself, because what, what larger, uh, what could I possibly have less control of than a, a worldwide pandemic, not just like canceling my gig or my tour, but just completely obliterating the entire industry. Like it's gone yeah. off the face of the planet. It, it's so extreme that I felt like the only thing you could do is just go, well, I wasn't expecting this. And that was why um, I, I, I just immediately shifted. Everything that I've done this year, nothing was something that was, was, was on the books. Nothing was planned for me. You know what I mean? And um, I, I'm really grateful. I also feel having friends like you, I mean, we have like, we've had a few kind of help uh, get togethers. Help is the name of our, me, Joe, Sean, and Celia. We have a four person group. I won't get into the story, but that's our, um, that's our, that's our, that's our little WhatsApp text group. You know, I'm grateful that I've had friends and family who are also in a good place and have been supportive um, because I don't do well alone, certainly. And, but beyond that, it's just all things considered, when you consider it, and I know you're in the same boat too, I had an expectation of the amount of money I was gonna make this year and where that was gonna be headed. And I had developed a plan with a financial planner that I was planning on buying a house in two years from now after two steady years of touring. I, you know, I had plans. And the old saying, man plans, God laughs, I think holds true. And the more I can roll with that, and the more I've been able to roll with that and accept that, the more fruitful this time has been. So now I have a completely different life than the one that I had before, or rather not completely different, utilizing certain elements. But I mean, you and I were both never in the same place for six months at a time like this. Um, and uh, there was, uh, I, my routine before was a lack of routine, but now I have a real routine and I've settled into kind of the peacefulness and serenity of frankly, just normal day-to-day -day stuff. I love reading. I love sipping on this cup of tea. I love doing stuff like this that I wouldn't have done a handful of months ago. Um, I, I, daily, one of my daily activities early on and still I try and do it five days a week is um, I don't have a car. Uh, and I walk, there are four different coffee shops. One of them is a mile away, two miles away, two miles away, two miles away. And I just walk there and walk back. And I talk to friends on the phone and I listen to music. I listen to podcasts. Um, I enjoy the fact that I, we live in a state where the weather, I mean, recently it's been a little fucked up, but normally the weather is nice. I enjoy the fact that uh, I'm just outside in the world. So there are things that bring me joy and activities uh, into which I have d dived, dove, um, which would never have happened um, if this hadn't happened. So uh, that's a You're, real, probably overly, you know, blah, blah answer to that question. But that's, that's, what, that's been the thing that I've learned. You've embraced it. Yeah. And just, as you said, surrender. You're like, hey, this is, what hap this is what's going on. So we better get used to it and do something about it. You can fight it all you want. It's not going to matter. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it is, it is. Talk about you know, completely immovable force, you know, <laughs> a huge yeah. pandemic. So someone said over there, they're like, Alex has become a regular person. And that's, uh, that, that's how I feel. I mean, it's just like, I feel like a re I, I was always a regular person, but, but this is kind of like a, a regular life, routine, calm, Oh, and the other thing I will learn, I will say, is that I don't really give a shit about living in a big city at all anymore. There were so many things that I thought, oh, God, I could never move someplace small because I need the variety of restaurants and I like having the different movie theaters. And also, I have not partaken in any of that stuff. And I haven't really missed it all that much. I cook for myself at home every single meal. I'm home most of the time. And yeah. Um, I do want to follow. So, so two questions. Uh... First of all, you mentioned podcast. Just out of top, off the top of my head, what's your favorite podcast? Just na to name one. 
Uh, yes, there's a podcast called Still a Great Joke. Um, it's I love that one. better. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> killer jokes, killer jokes. No, actually, most of the if I listen to podcasts, there's a Duolingo Spanish podcast, which has been aiding in my Spanish learning. And then a friend of mine recommended this book, which I really recommend. You'll love it, Sean, if you haven't read it. Have you ever heard of a motivational speaker called Zig Ziglar? I've heard the name. He's like an old school, this, this, so this was, it's on Audible. A friend of mine shared the book with me. Um, it's called Goals. It's just him talk. it's a series of his speeches or whatever. But the man talks with a very thick Southern accent and he's very enthusiastic. So when he starts talking about something, he could take on this very high pitched little, but then slows down and always ends a sentence like this. It <laughs> is awesome. It is so when I was in Mexico just now, Alejandro and I would walk around the city, you know, walk into different coffee shops there. And um, and listen to this audiobook Goals by Zig Ziglar. And uh, man, it is fun. She said she enjoyed it because she imagined that it was Matthew McConaughey. He sounds like he has that kind of um, Southern look. I get that. I get that. Um, but uh, but Sean, you will love it. You will love it. It's right up your alley. It's very in line with the kind of like um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People type thinking. He talks specifically about how to. Uh, you know, uh, develop your goals and what what the steps needed to to attain them instead of kind of keeping a vague idea of I'd like at some point to be successful. Um, and uh, and it's just so enjoyable. Like the, the way he delivers it, it's full of anecdotes and the way he delivers it is great. And I think I, at some point, I think he specified, I think it was in 1987. So the music is like, it's like, it's great, man. Goals, Ziggler. So, that's that. You know what? I'll I'll post I'll post a link to it uh, as well. And uh, someone keeps asking for you to sing a song, but I don't want you to sing a song. What I want to tell people is that tomorrow morning, or basically in about twenty two hours, you're going to do a set. So they should just get on Still a Great Night um, uh, Instagram and watch your live right at ten o'clock uh, Pacific. That's Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, LA time, which I think, okay, I went through this yesterday. It's 1 p.m. East Coast, U.S. time. It's, I believe, 6 p.m. London, 7 p.m. Spain, 8 p.m. Moscow. I believe that's what it is. I'll post about it. I have posted about it, but I will keep posting about it. And yeah, that's going to be a, a music set. So I, I chatted a little bit, but it's mostly me singing my songs. So I'd love it if you all came and joined. Awesome. Uh, let's take some more questions. Here we go. Let's see. Mm. Andy Allo is a guest. We did that. Experiences in Australia. Have you, were you with Australia? Were you with Australia in Enrique Iglesias? No. Were you with Enrique when he did Australia? So I, the la I've only been to Australia one time. It was at this point about 10 years ago. It was my first year of touring. Interestingly enough, I was all set. I was filling in for the regular guitarist in Miley Cyrus's band. Um, right. And, uh, and we had been in a full week of rehearsals. The set was ready to go. This was in March. Full week. Of, so basically, my, my year was going to be crazy. I went and did a gig in Saudi Arabia with Enrique. I got back and immediately, two days later, went on a four-day trip to the Grand Canyon with some of my friends. And then was slated to, I got back one day later and immediately launched into a week of Miley Cyrus rehearsals and then was going to go to Australia, do a gig, fly back, and then that day start, like I was going to get back at six in the morning and at 10 a.m. I was going to go straight into rehearsals with the LP and then go out on tour for like forever, basically. So like nine I, months. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was going to have to move out during the LP rehearsals because the way all that stuff lined up and like the second or third stop on the LP tour was Australia. So I was going to go to Australia with Miley Cyrus to do that Bushfire Benefit show. And then the day we were supposed to get on the plane, I get a call from the musical director and, uh, and he just said, unpack your bags. We're not going. It's canceled because that was when COVID hit. Two days later, we get a message from LP's manager. First leg of touring is completely off. Um, so yeah, so I was supposed to be in Australia twice in the span of less than 30 days this year. Uh, and in the first time. Uh, no, it was going to be my second. My first time with Enrique was 10 years ago, Enrique Pitbull. Um, and I was still, honestly, I was still really new. I didn't really know anyone yet. So I can't say I had crazy experiences just because I was like pretty uncomfortable, to be totally honest, still at that point. <laughs> so I don't have crazy stories. Um, I was really looking forward to going back. I was really looking forward to going back. So hopefully soon. What about you? Um, 
On my end, I did uh, 2013, I did shows and TV in Australia with Smash Mouth, and it was awesome. Then I think a year later, we went back for a festival, and that was awesome as well. And this year, we just did, just because you're close enough, right, that we just did New Zealand uh, with Smash Mouth, a few shows. It was awesome. And we were coming back for more shows in Australia and New Zealand. At the same time. We were going to be there at the same time, I remember. Yeah. And, of course, everything got canceled. Yeah. <laughs> So let's see what else we got. Mm -hmm. um, how was touring with LP? I love her sound. Yeah, tell us a little about that. Sure. Very, very different experience. You know, LP, especially when I started, she's even grown a lot more in the last two years. Uh, so she, she was, you know, she was very successful already when I joined on. Obviously, she wasn't some sort of, you know, like baby artist. But, um, but immediately, you know, with Enrique, he was a massive star when I joined. He, he'd been, you know, <laughs> globally famous for two decades already or whatever. So I found that he was like pretty removed from the process. You know, he wasn't on the tour bus with us. Uh, like we didn't hang out very much. It was kind of a hands-off thing. LP, you know, like we would go out to coffee and now she is, she's a close friend of mine. I just saw her yesterday. I speak to her on the phone probably twice a week. Um, so it's a very different relationship. Um, I, I love touring with LP. She's really sweet. She's really, really hardworking. I mean, we were doing shows. We did a six week tour in Europe and we had one day off, one day off in six weeks. She sings her butt off all day long. She practices singing the two to three hours. She's doing those exercises and then gets on stage and sings her hour and a half set. She comes out for sound check and sings all the way through the three or four songs for sound check. Um, and, uh, and so I really respect her work ethic. She's writing all the time when she's home, she's writing. When she's out on tour, she's, you know, like she flew her producer Mike out. We did a week in Greece together. It was like between tour, instead of just taking the time to relax after four months of grueling touring, she does a writing week. Um, so I really respect her work ethic. And like I said, she's just a sweetheart. You know, we just did a live stream show and she called me afterwards just to tell me how much she appreciated me being in her band. You know, that kind of stuff goes a long way for me. And, uh, and it's, it's, frankly, it's more important than a big payday. I, I, not that, I mean, on the money I make is fine. That has nothing to do with it. But what I'm saying is, like, I would rather get a phone call like that than like a Christmas bonus any day for me. And, um, and she, she, she's just she, encouraging and really respectful. Yeah, she's great. I, I couldn't say enough kind things about her. Yeah, and I, I mean, the question was about LP. I've got nothing to say. I've never met her. But um, I will say to your point that it really, it makes a difference for us. Like, you may see musicians play with Miley or with Bon Jovi or with Enrique or with LP. Or, you don't know what the dynamic is backstage. Yeah. You just, you never know. You think you know, because they look so friendly on stage, but you don't know what the dynamic is. Yeah. And I won't get into the, that, all the different dynamics. There's so many different dynamics. But when you get a call from your boss, a, 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 a bonus is always nice, you know, if they can afford it. But when you actually have that personal connection with, with the people that are paying you, dude, it goes such a long way. And when someone says, hey, thank you for having my back on that stage. Yeah, it go. It really goes a long way. Yeah. Um, let's see. How do you keep healthy during tour with lots of traveling and lack of sleep? Great question to the master master guns here. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it has to be a non-negotiable. It's very, very easy to fall into. I'm tired. Uh, I don't, you know, uh, like the, the hotel gym's not that good, or there is no hotel gym. Um, uh, the snacks in the dressing room, honestly, I try and whenever possible get, and, and most people are on this page. I know you're on this page. Like, I, I don't want junk food to be on the rider for the dressing room. The rider, by the way, for all of you who are not touring folks, is um, uh, when, when a band or an artist goes and plays, you know, the, the famous joke was always, I think it was um, Ozzy Osbourne that was like, he wanted like a bucket of brown M&Ms exclusively or something like that, or, or no brown M&Ms or whatever it was. Well, the well, idea, to, to just simplify it, it's a list of things, you can keep going, but it's a list of things that you, a writer, it's a list of things that you want slash need. There's a writer for the green room where we hang out. There's a writer 
for the, the PA and the gear. So that's what a rider is, but keep going. Yeah, so the rider is, and, and, and a lot of what it will apply to for us is on the bus, we'll get tour stock. So like, it'll be, they'll, they'll stock up the bus with food and then they'll stock the up bus the rider. So when, yeah, yep. so when we're sitting there in the dressing room, sometimes all day, like sometimes you arrive at a venue and you're there all day, there's food there for you. It, it's great when it's fruit and when it's healthy options. And if it's, um, oh yeah, someone said that was Van Halen. Yes, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. M&Ms. Um, yeah, uh, if there's junk food, there's only so long that my willpower is going to hold out. So if you, have <laughs> a, if you have a big bucket of sour gummies, eventually I'm just going to give in and just I'll be tired enough or annoyed enough or whatever. Hungry enough. And, uh, yeah, and, and, I'll, and that's it. And then the whole thing will be gone in five minutes. So I need for that stuff to be away from me. Same thing, like I don't keep junk food in my house because if it's in my house, I'm going to eat it. Yesterday I posted the junkiest I get is I'll get like, crystallized ginger and i will eat that entire thing in one day it's just like so it, if it's there i'll eat it so um so it's a combination of trying to keep uh that stuff away it's really helpful if your bandmates are also into eating healthy and exercise for sure because then everyone kind of gets on the same page like we would have jokes you know at some point like almost all of lp's band the, those of us that ate meat it would just be we were ordering from room service Chicken breast, rice, and veg steamed vegetables. That's it. That was like every single meal. Um, <laughs> and uh, exercise is just has to be a non-negotiable. Sometimes I will only have 15 minutes, and I'll go bust my ass and do 15 minutes worth of burpees, or I'll do sprints or something that can be done in 15 minutes. But if I'm like waiting for the ideal circumstance, a perfect gym where I have you know two hours that I can take my time and then shower and relax, or that's never going to happen. I have to be content with whatever I've been given. So if there's no gym uh, at the hotel. I'll do push-ups. I have like a shadow boxing routine that I'll do. If I can find some ledge to hang off and do pull-ups, I'll do pull-ups. Um, yeah, just anything. And then God willing, if there's a, a full gym at some point, you hit that. But it mostly is, like I said, just making it like, even if I just go there and run one mile on a treadmill or something, I'll go do that. It's not the same as some full crazy workout, but just forcing the regularity has been what's been important for me. Um, same thing with the snacks. Uh, you said it all. Uh, and uh, as far as working out, I really hate working out. I am uh, not like Alex. And I work out in my own ways. I go for long hikes. I, so I, I'm practicing right now. Oh, I didn't. I asked you what the, the, the favorite podcast. Mine is Meat Eater. It's a hunting podcast. And so I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting prepared for, for a hunt with another guy. And uh, I, so I'm, I'm getting prepared by going out and hiking nine miles with 50 pounds on my back and stuff like that. Um, so the, oh, yeah, it's a workout. I can't walk, walk for a week after that. But, yeah, someone says, What about working with an Israeli artist? Um, Rotem Cohen and I are always in touch, and we'll probably end up doing something together. Um but other than that, I do I do all kinds of uh, I do sessions for for Israeli artists. What about you? Do you ever ever get into that? My first serious girlfriend in seventh grade was Israeli. Um, that's that's all you need, really. That's all I got, really. No, uh, you know, like I said, uh, one nice thing about starting to do a little writing with you, and um, I, I I am trying to. I was also working with one of my LP bandmates a few months ago. I'm not great at collaborating. It's never really been my thing. Um, so I am uh, working on kind of branching out. A friend of yours who I met at the barbecue. God, now I can't even think of the dude's name. Was it, you were out with LP? No, 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 no. Uh, I met him at your house. His music is called like Wolf something. Um, Israeli dude. Uh, Israeli dude. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, Amit. Yes. We got together and I suffered from the exact same thing I always suffer from, which is like, I enjoy it and I just don't ever feel like I know what to say for other people's music, you know? Um, so uh, so like we started something, we came up with some really nice melodies, he had some great production and I just don't ever know what lyrically to say. I never know what to say. So, um, so it's just been, a, anyway, that's a long way to say that I'm currently not working with any Israeli artists unless you count you, Sean, which I do, you are an Israeli artist. Um, this is true. And, uh, but yeah, it's mostly just a matter of practicing, um, uh, working with other people in general. It's not my, it's, it's, it's not my practice skill set, really. 
Uh, we don't have too much time. We've got about nine minutes, nine minutes until this tells us uh, we've got a minute um, left. Uh, someone asked, do you have a dog? I do have a dog. Uh, it's uh, my dog is the is a child of divorce, unfortunately. So um, my ex and I bought our uh, bought. She's adopted our dog together. Um, uh, God, year ten years ago now, and unfortunately, she's had her for all of quarantine. So I haven't seen her in a minute. But yes, I have a beautiful pit bull mix. Named, was that too much personal information? Who knows? I have a beautiful pit bull mix named Adelaide, who I love very much, and I hope that she's been uh, happy as happy can be and enjoying her time in quarantine. But Unfortunately, I haven't seen her since March. Gotcha. Hey, Sean, you have a dog. Bran. Y'all know Bran. He yeah. just barks up a storm every time we're uh, doing anything here. Um, someone asked here, before I go to that question, um, if you guys had the opportunity to form your own band, Alex, Sean, Joe, uh, would you guys go for it? I know that, I, I will say I'm always down, but I know that, it's funny, Joe and Alex have always been talking about leaving the music business <laughs> and going into other businesses, which I do as well. I just do it as well. I don't want to leave the music. I want to be touring till I'm 70, but I also want to be doing a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I don't know. Would, would you be interested in that? Or I, I, Someone called me in the middle of you asking that question, so just finish the question and then I'll answer it. Oh, sorry. Um, someone asked if we had a chance to play basically the help crew would we play together? Would band. you be interested in that? Yeah, we'd be, we'd be missing a couple instruments. Joe would probably insist upon being the drummer, which I guess then I could play bass and you could play guitar maybe? Or would you want to play bass? You, I think he'd I, I play bass. Wouldn't he want to play guitar though? Joe is, Joe is a badass on, on all instruments, man. He's a really good musician. I think, I, I feel like he's always just looking for opportunities to play the drums, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, sure. I love playing with friends. So, you know, play, playing with people you like is, is the best. It's much better than, it's the best. It's much better than playing with It's the best. So, uh, <laughs> so, sure. Yeah. I mean, forming um, a band when you're, we're in our late 30s, you know, it's a funny thing to form a band now, but, uh, but I, you know, love playing together. And Celia would sing. I see that Andy EBS. Celia would sing, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for what it's worth, I love that I'm in my late 30s. You know, both both Joe and I are in our early 40s, but I'm glad you're in your late 30s. Oh, oh I didn't realize. Oh, wow. I didn't realize you old motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I know. It just doesn't look like it. I know. Um, yeah, you die, I'm sure. When did you learn to play guitar? Uh, I started when I was, it was the summer after seventh grade. So I was 13 years old. Uh, yeah, summer camp. I bought a guitar and brought it to summer camp. And for me, I think everyone knows by now, but when I was 13 and watched, uh, I mean, I took it seriously when I was 13 and I was watching um, Back to the Future. And oh. Marty, McFly, yeah. Marty McFly really got me going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Da, 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 da. I'm looking, there's so many questions, but they're, they're so specific, like, what about a show of you in Switzerland? You would rock the stage. Have you ever been there? Have you been to Switzerland? I've been to Switzerland a bunch of times. Yeah, uh, with LP. I don't think I've ever been there with Enrique. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been to Switzerland several several times. Sure, I love playing just about anywhere where there's a friendly face to come watch. I'm happy to play. So Switzerland, let's do it. Sean, let's get lost. Listen, touring is completely off, but our non-existent band is going to go play a show in Switzerland. What do you think? I, <laughs> I love that. Uh, speaking of. Um, someone asked, what do you miss the most about going on tour? You answer that first. Um, it may be cliche, but I miss the fans. I really do miss the fans. You, you know how much, I mean, I would be the first guy like, okay, the show's done. I'm going to go talk to everyone. You guys, I'll see you later. Because I love talking to people. I love going to Switzerland and I love going to Dubai and I love going to Israel and then to Brazil and just meeting people from all these different walks of life has always been fascinating to me and awesome. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about the fans. Um, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm just kidding. No, I, obviously playing shows is the, the thing that gets us moving around the world and it's great. Like I said, anywhere where there is a friendly face in the audience is just like, it's just a killer experience. It is, it is an experience. I, I would have, I, listen, I've never, I haven't done a lot of other things, but it's unlike anything else. You know what I mean? So g 
going and playing for people and seeing, getting to know some of kind of the same people. You know, we, we both play for artists that have diehard fans that travel around and that's really cool. Um, just seeing the same faces and uh, yeah, man, it's, it's really nice. But I will say, you know, separate from my joke, but I don't give a fuck about the fans. Um, uh, I, um, the thing that I miss the most has, has nothing to do with music, uh, especially in the last couple of years. I will say when I was on tour with Enrique, I just spent a lot of time in my hotel room, man. I just like barely left. I didn't do anything. And I regret that a lot. I don't regret that as in like, oh, I wish I could go back and change time. But what I actively try and do now and what I've spent the last two years doing is I've taken up a cappuccino uh, habit. And my favorite thing to do is look up what the best coffee shop in town, wherever, whatever city I'm in, and go sit there with a book and see how good their coffee is. Um, it, it, that is honest to God. I posted about that on Instagram a few weeks ago when I was in Mexico City. Going and finding different coffee shops around the world, seeing what their coffee is about, and sitting and reading a book for a couple hours in the middle of the day is that's like that's my happy place and i i really miss that i really miss that a lot that's awesome um this is I, we're going to do this because i don't want it to cut us off so we've got like two three minutes I, and i'm going to change someone asked what's your favorite song played together with sean i'm going to change that for the enrique fans to what is your favorite enrique song that you played with sean actually that's the only songs you played, played with sean on stage yes so uh I mean, just too many to name, but of course, of course, guys, the magic moment that everyone's waiting for in the show that I know is why everyone is spending their hard earned money to travel the world and see Enrique Iglesias is for when Sean is taking the solo during Hero and I awkwardly walk up to him in the middle of the stage and just stand there while you play a beautiful solo. That's the best moment. And if anybody has a different answer than that, I don't know what they need to reevaluate their life choices. <laughs> Um, that's awesome. <laughs> um, man, you know, I, people had asked me what my favorite song was to play with him. It was the last song. It was uh, Baby, I Like It, because I just, oh, yeah. we, we had so much fun. I mean, obviously, I thought about Hero, but I just, um, yeah, that was awesome. Actually, the, the moment, so the moment that uh, he's talking about, I'll post a link to the hero video that I post. And I, I give a yeah. shout out to Alex. He actually does a little cameo. Um, we're just about done. Give us some plugs for whatever you want people to know about. Talk about the podcast again, whatever you want. We'll probably have like a minute left. Okay, Sean, thank you for asking me on this. Everyone who tuned in, this has been really cool. It's been fun answering your guys' questions. I'm glad to see you all of you here. Um, tomorrow, please join me on my Instagram at 10 a.m. LA time. It's posted all the other times. I'll be doing a set of my own music and singing songs. Um, it's been really cool. I did them every Sunday in July, and it was awesome to see everybody. So I'd love to see you all there. Um, I released a lot of music this summer, and I also started releasing my podcast, Still a Great Joke. All of that is available by the link in my bio. Go check out my videos. Go listen to my music. Go subscribe to and check out my podcast. Um, that's it. I think we're almost out of time. But, man, th this was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, man. Awesome, man. Thanks so much for being with us. And, and for everyone, we saw all of you guys and we miss a lot of questions, but thank you for asking them. And I hope we got a lot of questions and um, hopefully we do it again sometime. Yes. Yes, sir. And I'll hopefully, hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Awesome. Yes. Have a great show tomorrow. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Have a nice weekend. Later. Bye. Bye. Bye.